G'day to all the viewers. It's such a blessing to be able to share with you today. Um, we're going to touch on a few different things, but mainly we're going to be touching on some things mentioned in John 15, which I believe is such a powerful piece of scripture that, and as with most scriptures, if we stick to just surface level of what we read, we still can get a life-changing experience. But when we actually study scripture and we actually dig in, and we read it from the Father's perspective or through the love of Jesus Christ, it can completely transform a scripture and bring so much more fruit in your life. And that is one of the things that I really feel God is stirring in the body right now, is to look at our lives and ask ourselves, are we really carrying fruit? And I think there's a big misconception for a lot of people of, of what that fruit should actually be, what that looks like, or how do we even get to the point where our lives are carrying fruit. Let's just start with a prayer. Father, we honor you, we praise you, we worship you. May everything we do, we say, we even our thoughts glorify you and be so rooted and grounded inside of you. I ask that your love would truly transform us, would live and move inside of us, and that we would be open to hear what you want to say, not just hear what you say to us, Lord, but that we would react and act and live out that which you have asked us to do. In the mighty and all-powerful name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to start off just by reading from John 15 from verse 1. I'm reading out of the Passion Translation, which is such a powerful translation. Um, yeah, let's start at verse 1. I'm a true sprouting vine, and the farmer who tends the vine is my father. He cares for the branches connected to me by lifting and propping up the fruitless branches and pruning every fruitful branch to yield a greater harvest. The words I have spoken over you have already cleansed you. I think just starting right there, it is so important to realize, and I think something that a lot of people struggle with when they read it, is when they go through a tough time in life, they always say, God is just pruning me. But the, in the back of their minds, and I've heard so many people say it, they believe that it is because they are being punished for not bearing fruit. But we have to keep in mind when we read Scripture that we should read it with the Holy Spirit and with the context of the Father's love and the love of Jesus Christ. He died for us, which means there's great, immense power and value on our life, not because the way we look at ourselves or the way we interpret our personality or calling or identity. The value is there because of what Jesus Christ did. So whenever we read Scripture, and even especially when it comes to pruning or His judgment, it is so important that we keep it in context of who we know the Father is. And right there it already says the reason He prunes us is so that we can bear more fruit. And it says He does that by lifting up and propping up the fruitless ones. If you look at a farmer, he doesn't just snap off the pieces that he's not happy with. There's a process of a support system that is put in place to make sure that that piece can grow and carry the maximum amount of fruit as it is created to be. And that is so important that we remember that, that when we feel like there's a pruning process, that we keep our hearts open and not experience it as God's judgment, but His love to make sure that we are actually stepping into the fullness of what He's created us to carry. So you must remain in life union with me, for, if, for I remain in life union with you. For as a branch severed from the vine will not bear fruit, so your life will be fruitless unless you live life intimately joined to mine. And I think that is such a powerful key if our lives aren't bearing fruit and we have to be honest with ourselves whether we are carrying fruit in our lives. It is a natural outflow of having an intimate relationship of Jesus Christ. It is so important that we realize that bearing fruit in our lives is not going to come when we make great plans. It's not going to come when we do things on our time or through our power or just because it's good or great things to do. A life of bearing fruit and pouring out what is inside of you comes when you have an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ and it is a natural outflow. The, the, it's such a beautiful picture for me, this branch and the vine being one. And we have to understand that the fruit that the branch carries is because of what is flowing through it from the vine. So if we are truly connected to God, then the fruit will show that. And the fruit is just a natural outflow of not what we can do with our power, or our time, or with whatever we think we need to do. But when we submit to what the Father's plans are, what His ways are, and we start releasing and resting and flowing with that through us. It's really sad to see how many people, how many Christians 
specifically when it comes to church or ministry, go through a phase where they get so tired or so burnt out. And I do believe a lot of times that is because we get to a place where we have so fallen into a system or habits of doing certain things certain ways that we move away from that amazing place where we go to God and we say, God, what do you want to do today? What are you saying about today? And it's then when we move away from bearing fruit because we are taking ourselves as the branches, disconnecting from the vine and yet still expecting that the fruit should be a sign of what, vine, what that vine is, the Father and His love. And it's so important if we look at the life of Jesus Christ, the fruit we carry as sons of God, if we have truly surrendered to His will and His ways, is not temporary or seasonal. And that is really a mindset that, that we need to deal with, that when we think about the things of God and what He has created us for, a lot of people tend to think seasonal, which is natural mindset and yes there's definitely keys for us and the word does talk about seasons but God's plans for you stretches into eternity and if you just look at the blueprint for your life which is Jesus Christ you still see fruit manifest today of what he did thousands of years ago and I truly believe in our lives we should have the same experience that the things we do if it's with the Holy Spirit and in obedience to what Jesus has asked us to do we would see fruit not just now, not just for the next generation, but for generations to come and for years and years and years because Jesus Christ works on eternity. And we must be careful not to limit what He wants to do in your life and in my life because we're stuck thinking about certain seasons and we limit what He wants to do and put a box on what God has called you to do. And that's so important that it starts with such humility of moving as a branch, moving as part of the vine and realizing it is not about my personality or my, what I perceive as my calling or what I think is the most comfortable situation. If you look at the powerful life-changing events in the Bible, most of that happened when someone had to act completely against their personality or their nature. And you can go through most of the major events in the Bible in the Old and New Testament and you'll see God do amazing things. But at the beginning of, of that whole process, there's most of the time someone that had to say yes when God asked them to do something that they didn't think they were capable of or was completely against their life that they've lived up to that point. So when we get in a situation where we feel that we're being asked to do something that is not, not at all in our comfort zone or what we are used to or even what we are comfortable with or our personality, then we should really take the time to pray on that situation because it's then when God does the amazing transformations, not just in your life, but for those around you. And that brings me to another really important point. I had a... A very wise man speak recently and he said he's never seen a tree eat its own fruit. And what he meant by that is a lot of times people think that the fruit we carry in our lives or this life in abundance and blessings that we are supposed to walk with is just for ourselves. But if you look at the life of Jesus Christ, it was everything was for the kingdom in obedience through the Father with so much love and the fruit wasn't just for him, but for those around him to experience that same love, that same obedience, that same blessings and the heart of the Father. And that is what, if you really want to feel a great increase in what God does in your life, then it's important that we get to a place where the fruit we desire to carry and the blessings we desire to see is not so that God would pour it out on us, but that it would flow through us so that we could pour it out on other people. And that is really something I believe that is the body of Christ needs to move back to is get to a place where we are actually pouring out God's blessings, not just within the, within the four walls of the church, but to actually move beyond that and start releasing the love of the Father and the heart of the Father into the world out there so that they can experience that same love. Because Jesus Christ died for them just as much as He died for every single one of us that sits on a church in a Sunday morning. And it's important that we realize the fruit we carry is there as a support system and to be a blessing from God to those people around us. We aren't the ones that need to feed on our own fruit. We need to make sure that those that are hungry and thirsty get to experience Jesus Christ, the living God, through us by the fruit that our lives carry because of an intimate relationship with Him.
Let's go to verse 5. I'm the sprouting vine and you're my branches. As you live in union with me as your source, fruitfulness will stream from within you. But when you live separated from me, you are powerless. If a person is separated from me, he's discarded. Such branches are gathered up and thrown into the fire to be burned. But if you live life in union with me, and if my words live powerfully within you, then you can ask whatever you desire and it will be done. When your lives bear abundant fruit, you demonstrate that you are my mature disciples who glorify my Father. That is such a, a, a great piece of scripture. The whole John 15 is such a powerful piece with so many keys for us to start moving to a place where our lives have gone past a point where we are just trying to figure out what, what's right and what's wrong. But that we start operating as mature disciples. And part of that, like the scripture says, a key or a manifestation of that is that there will be the fruit in our lives. Now, it is so, such a key place for us to be in as well as mature disciples, to actually be at a place where we function as disciples ourselves. And because of that, we can walk the journey of discipleship with other people who need to go through that same process and journey, learning to let go of all the distractions, all the previous ways things were done in their lives or whatever the world has told them to do or whatever that life used to look like. To be able to actually let go of those things, move away from it and actually follow Jesus Christ and, and do the things that He's so, so amazingly showed us how to do and what to do and even when to do. There's, there's a misconception that, there's a, that most part of your life is just going to be waiting for the one day that your calling is actually, you have the platform for that. But Jesus makes it clear that if we live in union with Him, every second of our day can be soaked with His presence and walking out His will and His ways. It talks about if you're not walking with Him, how we can be powerless and grow tired and weary. And that is something that we need to realize. If we look at the life of Jesus Christ, when, even when He just got hungry or thirsty or He was tired after a long journey, just spending that time in the presence of the Father and doing the will of the Father, Gave him so much power and energy that he didn't have to eat. And there's times where he didn't sleep. He prayed right through the night so many times. We know the amazing story where he meets the woman at the well where his disciples are sent to go gather food. And when they come back, Jesus tells them that he eats of food that they do not know of. He eats of the will of the Father. And that should really be such a powerful key for us as well to say, listen, if I'm getting so tired and so burnt out, or if I feel that there's something inside of me that's not being satisfied, that I really need to spend that time and dig into what is God's will for my life. God is not someone who wastes time or just sits around and waits for opportunity. When you are walking in oneness with Jesus Christ and in an intimate relationship, then every second of your day, is where you release the presence of God and where you change what is going on in your family, at your workplace, in your church, in your nation and in the rest of the world. And we need to realize that, that the presence of God is one of the most powerful tools that we have as sons of God. And if the Holy Spirit is inside of us, it means that you carry that at all times. And it's in your hands whether you are going to make use of the presence of God that He has put inside of you to reveal and reflect Jesus Christ to the world. It's so amazing to see what happens when we just shift our awareness to His presence and the amazing things that happen in people's lives. Not because they got a step 1 to 10 solution for the life they were living or for situation, but because they took their focus off of the problem or the situation and they actually placed it on what Jesus Christ has already done and already given them. And it's a powerful key for our prayer lives as well. We can spend hours and hours trying to get victory and battle and get tired and get hurt and get burned out. Or we can actually trust what the scriptures say, which is Jesus already did it all. He's got the victory and you can step into that victory. And then our prayers change from being hours of feeling that we are in war and being cursed and attacked. And it moves to a place where we say, thank you, Jesus. And we align with His will and His ways and with His presence. And we simply administrate the victory we already have. And that really makes such a major difference in our walk with God. If our mindset is, Jesus has already got the victory, I must just allow that to flow through me as a branch and I will see the fruits of true freedom and victory.
a lot of times if we walk with a mindset that everything is a battle and a war, then we will always feel like we're on the middle of a war and a battle. And we will be so focused and aware of everything that is not the way we like it or the way we would want it to be. And that really steals so much from time that could be spent reflecting Jesus Christ, worshipping Him, praising Him, lifting Him up, or allowing Him to flow through us. So it's so important, and the Scripture says it so many times, take your mind off these distractions and put it on the things above. The Scriptures even say, feast on the heavenly realities. And that is such a powerful key for us in our lives and something that we need to start moving into and maturing into where we actually feast on what Jesus Christ has made available for us. Scripture says we have full and free access with unveiled faces because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. So again, it is in our hands whether we are going to use that, actually step into the presence of the Father with unveiled faces, not trying to hide anything from Him. Open ourselves up and allow Him to use us as those vessels that He's created us to be, for those vessels of change to actually flow through us and the fruit becomes a natural manifestation of the sons of God who allow God to work and flow through them. Go to verse 9. It says, I love each of you with the same love that the Father loves me. You must continue to let my love nourish your hearts. If you keep my commandments, you will love my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments. For I continually live nourished and empowered by His love. My purpose for telling you these things is so that the joy that I experience will fill your hearts to overflow with gladness. It's so amazing for me how many times in Scripture the word overflow or abundance comes up. And I really believe that is what our lives should look like. Whether that is in love, in joy, in peace, and you can, you can go down that list. Our lives should be life and life in abundance. Because that is the life Jesus Christ has got planned for you. That is the blueprint that He has set out for you. That even if your circumstances are showing that it should be the exact opposite for you. To set your mind on the heavenly realities which says that inside of Jesus Christ you have every single thing you need and you have life and life in abundance. To have that nourishment and that total peace and rest because of His love. And it's from that place that we could actually start loving other people the way that God loves us and the way that we should love Him as well. It's so amazing for me how God brings all the commandments together and Jesus says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your being, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. And really I believe that love yourself is not a a place of pride or really just keep lifting yourself up. But for me that's about seeing yourself the way Jesus Christ sees you. And then even more importantly, seeing yourself inside of Christ and seeing Christ inside of you. So it's not a selfish love or love that just wants the best for what I can do or what I want in my life. But that love is a love that's there because of Jesus Christ, for Jesus Christ. And that love is there not just because I want something for me or whatever I could get out of the situation, but because I want that love, the love of the Father, to be what flows through me so that I can love those around me. And our heart should be that the people out there should really not experience A love like they've ever experienced before, but they would experience the true, all-powerful love of the Father that brings the breakthrough, that brings the freedom, that brings the release. And that's that's really what the transformation in our hearts that needs to take place, and that's only going to come if we live a life that we totally submit and let go of what we thought things should look like or should work for. There's been times where God's told me to to give someone a word and it's really the opposite of what I thought I should say to that person. And I would go in obedience and release that word to someone. The way they would react would blow me away and they would experience God in a way that they haven't before. Not because I did something amazing and not because I went with what my head was telling me is the way I should do it. But simply because I allowed what was coming from the vine to flow through me as a branch. And allow God to use me as that vessel. And that brought the transformation. If we want to do things the way that we thought it should be done. Or we feel comfortable doing it. Then we have to ask ourselves if we are really allowing the vine to flow through us. Or are we trying to function separate just keeping the, the vine in mind. 
There's a lot of times in our lives, if we had to be honest with ourselves, that we do things with God in the back of our mind and at the end of working out all our plans and doing something our way, we just apply the name of God and say, Jesus, this was for you. But if we want to see the fruit and the freedom and the victory and the love and the transformation, then it's important that we always start with God. What do you want to do? What do you want to say? And that only comes from an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, which is so available for us. And all it takes is for us to surrender our lives and step into that love relationship with Him and make sure that what I do, what I think, what I say, can I truly say that what is flowing through me is coming from the vine, the Father. And every single thing that will then flow through me will be through the love of Jesus Christ, which is the ultimate power and transforming key for every situation, every problem, every need and every desire that anybody else has outside of this place. And it's important that we realize there's a responsibility on us chosen to be the vessels and the mirrors reflecting Jesus Christ for a world out there desperate to experience the true love and the living God. May God bless and spoil you and may you really experience Him like you've never experienced Him before. Amen.